This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon, and welcome to another episode of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. With me today in the Think Tech studios is Dr. Kaloha Fox. Welcome, Dr. Fox. Aloha. And uh, Likeable Science is all about how science is an integral and vital part of all of our lives, and Kaloha has uh, made this the center of her research, actually. Uh, she studies the sort of the that melding, the intersection between traditional Hawaiian concepts of health, wellness, illness, and modern medicine. So maybe we can give the audience a little more specific focus on what it is you do. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you. Mahalo for having me here. Um, my formal Western training is as a biomedical scientist, and I, and I train specifically in clinical research and clinical psychology. Um, but as a Native Hawaiian, it was really, you know, a part of my goal throughout my education was to make sure that I can hold on to my cultural beliefs and our values and those concepts that are very akin to some of the concepts that I was studying in school so that I could integrate them. So they're much more practical when I think of everyday solutions that can actually help improve Native Hawaiian health for the long term. Yeah, it's very important and more and more we're coming to realize that, that science is not something that's divorced from societies and cultures. It springs from them, is deeply influenced by the values, the beliefs, the processes of the culture or society. So this makes great sense. You, you've, you're sort of bringing that to the fore, as yeah. it were. Yeah, absolutely. And then the idea of being sure it's applicable, again, it's a, to me, that's really critical stuff that's very helpful in, in sort of what I'm trying to do here through this show is, is to make people understand the value of, of science. So, uh, you know, congratulations and, and kudos to you for, for taking this approach. Oh, thank you. So specifically, you, you are looking at what, though? Um, so my research is actually focused on understanding the concept of Hawaiian ma'i. So what are Hawaiian perceptions of illness or sickness or disease or disorder? Which for us, we actually conceptualize as it's, it starts as, as an imbalance. It mm -hmm. could be an imbalance in oneself. It could be an imbalance in one's family or with the way that we interact with the environment. It's multi-layered and it's... it's um, it's a really dense concept that has um, a lot of meaning to it, both culturally, but also through health and medicine, too. Sure. It's, I mean, it does tie into the, the whole sort of physiological concept of homeostasis, right, where we, we all are this sort of delicate balance of a lot of forces, a lot mm -hmm. of different life forms, a lot of different uh, chemicals all being interplaying, and, and indeed, if one of these drops out or springs too strongly, then we're, we are out of balance in some right. sense. You know? Right, so right. So it's, it's really wonderful to hear, hear that strong, strong and striking parallel. Oh, yeah. 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 So, so how did you uh, sort of, what, what was your career path to, or your educational path to get into this? Um, so I always acknowledge um, that for me, learning starts within your family, within your community. Um, so for me, it started in that place. Mm -hmm. um, I had a wonderful grandmother um, who made sure that we always had Hawaiian values and practices in the home. I was lucky enough mm -hmm. to start training um, with my uncle at the age of 18, who was revered in his knowledge um, in this subject. Mm -hmm. So I actually started training in traditional Hawaiian health and medicine long before I actually made it into the Johnny Burns School of Medicine, oh. but um, then was able to integrate it later. Excellent, and you've done so very well. Uh, Kalo has a string of awards and, and honors from mm, local, yeah. and national, and even international <laughs> organizations. So uh, it's, it's, she's obviously made a, made a real success of this whole thing. And where do you, you, you sort of say, you, you said you wanted to apply this in, in a practical, pragmatic way. Can you expand on that a little bit? What, what, do, you, what do you want to do with this? Yeah, I mean, I think the response for me has been, you know, really overwhelming in the past year or so. Um, and I think it just touches on the point that so many of us really want a different system of health and health care and the way that we receive um, interventions or treatments. Um, 
And so for many of us that are in indigenous and native communities, um, most oftentimes we're actually looking to, how can we go back to those traditional beliefs, those traditional values? And in this case, really articulating what are traditional practices that are still usable, that are still known to us today, that we can reintegrate, that we can reinstate, that we can rebuild. Huh. That, that's very interesting. Uh, some of the work I've been doing in relationship to water, we're, mm. we're doing sort of the same kind of things. We look, we look back and say the Hawaiians used to revere their water. They used to we take, still care, do, take, yeah. take care of the mm -hmm. water very well, and mm -hmm. now we channelize it and shoot yes. it off the island and dump sediment out into the lagoons. And, yes. Uh, we shouldn't be doing that. We should obviously be learning from and taking our example from people who were much smarter and did much better practices. Yeah, I feel like that's a great illustrative point. So if the water is, uh, if there's pathogens in the water, for mm -hmm. example, if the water itself is imbalanced, and that's the water that we're drinking from, that's the water that our children are, say, bathing or swimming in, mm -hmm. It's, it's, of course, we're going to get sick. We're going to become imbalanced from that water. So not only do we have to protect ourselves, we have to protect our natural and cultural resources, which was a part of our system of health and medicine for all of these generations. Exactly. Medicine was not something that was sort of divorced and, and no. set off in a separate school. No. Right. As it now rather is. But uh, you know, I, I think we're seeing some even in mainstream medicine, some uh, the pendulum is starting to swing back a little bit. People are beginning to look at sort of, they call it personalized medicine or predictive medicine. Yes, and yes. And sort of more on this concept of how do we keep people well mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. than let's wait until they get sick and start treating them. So Yes, yes. So that's, that's uh, and that lay much more at the center, I gather, of the, the practices you speak of, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could, you, could you give us an, an example of that? Right, so I think if we take the concept of preventative medicine mm -hmm. and um, we, we look at these concepts before, say, they become imbalanced to begin with, mm -hmm. that's a very Hawaiian way of thinking, and we're just starting to articulate that within medical research um, within the past few years, within the, the recent decades. Mm -hmm. But Hawaiians, we've been doing this for generations. Mm -hmm. um, so what I started to look at was this, this dual concept of what is ma'i that imbalances sickness, mm -hmm. the diseases and disorders, and that of ola, what's our state of well-being, of overall wellness, of um, that life force that breathes um, mana into us as people. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of understanding how the process of ma'i and ola are balanced for us in present day in looking at these concepts. Excellent. And, and there, apparently this was a matter of some concern, right? You said you found something like 7,000 different terms. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that's, I mean. It was uh, overwhelming. Right, it wasn't just the clients are saying we're sick or we're well or we're out of no. balance or in balance. They, really, right. they had a very nuanced understanding of different kinds of illness, different kinds of imbalance, as it were, right? Right, yeah. right. so as a biomedical scientist, of course, we're looking for evidence, right? Mm -hmm. right? So I started this process of looking for what are traditional exemplars that talk about these concepts mm -hmm. of ma'i, these terms, right, that we can understand and articulate in mm -hmm. present day. And so what I did uh, was a full eight-arm research study that was very exploratory, um, and then we found over 7,000 terms, which to me is a massive indication that traditional Hawaiian practitioners of medicine value this concept so much that they've been passed down generation to generation. It's been recorded for us in the Hawaiian language newspapers. It's mm -hmm. been written about by the, the great publishers like Malo and E.E. Mm -hmm. e. and Mary Kavena Pukui, for example. And so I was able to look at all of these different sources, combine the findings, and yes, we've, we have found, and we're still finding, I'm still finding more, um, we found over 7,000 terms. Yeah. That's, that's really, it, it, it must be wonderful sort of digging into that wealth of knowledge. Mm. And, uh, particularly because it, it seems almost in a, a, a contrast. I'm not sure if this is, I may be mixing things here, or, or uh, there's a, uh, an attitude among some, uh, at least out sort of across Micronesia, of uh, uh, sort of you're living for today, you're, you're not looking ahead, you're not caring mm. for things that might be going wrong. Uh, and we found this in my work with water, getting people to think about cleaning out the rainwater mm. catchment systems is difficult. They mm -hmm. sort of, they may build a system, but then they'll just let it be because they think it's good. Uh, so you're sort of talking about something, uh, this, 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 people are very much looking ahead, taking care in advance. 
Yeah, so I think in this case, what my work is specifically focused on is this concept of Maoliolaloa, where it's long term, long lasting Native Hawaiian health and wellness and life, right? Mm -hmm. So we're looking five, seven generations out and trying to reconcile five to seven generations that have disintegrated our health and well being over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, you know, certainly the Hawaiians have faced a huge onslaught of mm. uh, health issues ever since the uh, Western powers of me started visiting, mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's really uh, amazing to, to think about. Yeah, let's let's try to think far in the future and consider what's what's it going to take, right? Right. And what's that? What's that system going to look like? Right. You know, who are they? Healthcare practitioners, mm -hmm. as it were, who's your healthcare workforce? Yes, yes. And really, I suppose it, it, it's essentially every, everyone to a greater or lesser extent, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and and I feel like my recommendations are always that it should be integrated, and that when we put the patient at the center, when we really value the way that they articulate their own wellness, the wellness of their family, of their generations that come in the future, um, I, I think that including um, traditional concepts and values and um, the cultural work is really integral to where we're at right now is, as Native Hawaiians and we're calling for action that makes sure that this is integrated into these plans moving forward for say the next 100, 150 years. Yeah, and, well, that's, and that's very timely. I mean, with all, all the all the different debates about healthcare and how yes. healthcare is going to, what it's going to look like, how it's going to be provided, who's yes. going to be paying for it, what's mm -hmm. going to be covered. This is this is certainly a great contribution to have into that into that debate and valuable stuff because. Yes. It, again, it speaks to this issue of not, it's not a one-size-fits-all world, right? Yeah. And there's a number of people who probably wouldn't care too much about that. The, the, the ideas that you're talking about wouldn't have a lot of resonance with mm -hmm. them, right? Right. But, but for you and for a lot of other people, it, it, it's, it's critical, it's central stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think um, I, I'm just so honored to be a part of the field and the discipline at the time that I'm in right now. I think mm -hmm. the health and health care, um, those topics are Every, they're around us every single day. They're on the news, um, they're in what we read, um, they're in conversations in our workplace. They're absolutely at the university um, in the conversations that we're having. And so we don't have the answers though. And so I think it's time that when we put together and articulate plans of what that might look like mm -hmm. in the future, um, but, you know, it's, we, we don't have bounds. We can be progressive. We can be integrative, and we can certainly be integrative. Right. You, you've got to you've got to start raising the questions, talking about it. Uh, mm -hmm. it I mean, it's it's somewhat like science itself, right? Mm -hmm. Science doesn't really claim to have the answer. Science just claims maybe to have a process for asking the questions. Right. That's right. sort of driving the conversation forward in a productive way, and it sounds like a similar. Uh, issue here, mm -hmm. but yeah, yes. because clearly, if you, uh, if a community or a family or an individual is not healthy, sort of almost nothing else matters, and in some sense, that, that's very central to their, to their very existence. Yeah, and, and I think that that's part of my role as a scientist here in Hawaii is being a part of these conversations, being a part of these working groups, these task forces where the dialogue is occurring, and help to include. You know, culturally appropriate recommendations mm -hmm. where they can be made. Yeah, we've, we're doing. Uh, I work some with the Hawaii Public Health Association. Mm -hmm. We're doing mm -hmm. stuff on oral health now, and I right. was appalled to see the disparity and, and the, the fact that in third grade, Native Hawaiian kids are something like seven times more likely to have had experienced dental caries than Caucasian kids. Yes. It's just. Yes, and a lot of people don't actually realize that um, when you look at oral health, it's actually a precursor for so many other ma'i, these yeah. illnesses, these sicknesses, these diseases and disorders that come later, you know, 5, 10, 20 years down the line. It's all interconnected. Speaking of things being interconnected and coming later, we're going to have to take a brief break right now, but we are going to come back in about one minute. Uh, Dr. Kailoa Fox is here with me, your host Ethan Allen here on Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii, and we'll be back in a minute. I'm going to the game and it's gonna be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink but won't be drinking today cause I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line. Keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way cause it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you wanna be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the H2O and I'm the 
got it says let's go Aloha, I'm Tim Apachaw, host for Moving Hawaii Forward, a show dedicated to transportation issues and traffic. We identify those areas where we do have problems in the state, but also the show is dedicated to trying to find solutions, not just detail our problems. So join me every other Tuesday on Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm Tim Apachella. Thank you. And you're back here on Likeable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Think Tech Hawaii. With me today in the Think Tech studios is Dr. Kealoa Fox. Hello. Welcome again. Hello. And we're talking about the intersections of traditional Hawaiian concepts of health and illness with those of modern medicine. Dr. Fox is doing a lot of interesting research into uh, digging into some of the past ideas. We talked earlier of the 7,000 different terms that relate to health or imbalance, illness. Uh, can you maybe talk a little more about, about some aspects of your, of your research that you're particularly intrigued with? Yeah, mahalo. So um, the terms were just one outcome of right. the, the research question and the study that I had constructed. Um, but part of the process was actually looking at what's the traditional Hawaiian system of health and care as it would have always been known to us that we want to rebuild and resurrect um, today. And so that's where some of the specific practices come in, right? So that's concepts like um, lomi lomi and ho'oponopono and la'au lapa'au. Okay, maybe you can, uh, yeah. <laughs> just, I'm not sure how many of our audience uh, know all those. Yeah, so lomi lomi is that, um, uh, a lot of people perceive it as like massage, so it's like, those are our experts of like physical medicine, um, okay. where that body was really manipulated. We would work on the tendons and the joints, and then uh, the body is realigned and then the ma'i, the illness, the sickness is actually then, uh, it's, it's spread so that um, then it leaves the person's body and then they are more whole and balanced again. Oh, okay. um, so that's lomi lomi. Okay. Um, Ho'oponopono is um, often um, performed within families or groups of um, kin and so what it's looking to restore is that, that family bond and rebuild uh, relational balance. And so that's where you would communicate where any um, disgruntlements to relatives maybe would have occurred. Okay. Um, and then la'au lapa'au um, is uh, really our, our own pharmacopoeia and our plant-based medicine that's very related to you know ethnobotany huh. uh, today. Wow, so yeah. Those are just a few. Yeah, yeah. No, this, but this is all, this, this show is again, it suggests that the breadth, depth, and sophistication mm -hmm. of, of uh, this whole area of study to, to the to, in the traditional Hawaiian society. Yeah. So what was uh, most critical and important for me was to make sure that I approached um, the study and the work um, as a Native Hawaiian to approach these uh, Hawaiian concepts and these practitioners which, with much respect mm -hmm. and to honor their knowledge and their wisdom from their lineages. And so I did work um, with 50 living of our traditional practitioners throughout the course of this research to really understand um, how does how does the concept of well-being and imbalance, how does it function for them mm -hmm. as the healer, as the practitioner, that sits with their clients, with their patients. Mm -hmm. No, I, I like your, your referencing it as a system. Mm. I mean, this, this, it, it suggests this level of understanding that these mm -hmm. things aren't occurring in isolation yeah. as it's not just a germ here or a bad chemical here. It, it's how we're living our lives and how we're running into these and how we're ingesting them or avoiding them or fighting them off once they're within us. Right, so in my case, I've tried to use my traditional and Western education training to re-articulate what this legacy is mm -hmm. and use my voice to help be um, a platform that elevates, that this, this is what we do, right? It is a system of care. It's not siloed. Mm -hmm. It's very, um, it's very relational. It's very collaborative mm -hmm. and that it's the system in a whole that brings about wellness, that brings about maoliola. Sure, and I mean, we, we can see that, we recognize more and more as you study ecosystems mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. looking at this on a global level that it's essentially impossible to think about right. any one thing as right. being separate. Everything all really is very interconnected and right. what we do here in Hawaii has impacts elsewhere 
what folks are doing when they're doing mining in eastern China. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. has impacts around the world. The, mm -hmm. the dust goes up in the air. It swirls all around the world. Right. Uh, I was reading a, a fascinating article recently that, that points out that we all, virtually everyone, has now some of the uh, the PCBs basically mm. are found in, in almost everyone on Earth now uh, because they were widely used for quite a few decades and got into all the air and the water okay. systems and circulated around the globe and people even who had no reason ever to run into them now now right. have them. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. So uh, where where do you so sort of realistically, where, where, how do you see this moving ahead? I mean, mm. what, what, what are going to be the next steps, and how are, is this system that you envision uh, for Hawaiians, uh, how is it sort of integrated into the larger system of, of health and, and medicine? Mm, great question. So when I designed the study um, and the work, I really wanted it to not just be theoretical, mm -hmm. which oftentimes our science can be. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted it to be really practical. I want it to be able to be used for not only clinicians, but also practitioners, right? Uh -huh. So um, what I see first and foremost is there's an, an opportunity here to um, bring forth culturally and linguistically appropriate health services mm -hmm. um, that are delivered to Native Hawaiians, yeah. that articulate our language, that are embedded with our values, um, that have mana, they have mm -hmm. this, this spirit to it that's uh, more aligned mm -hmm. to how we live and breathe and think within our own homes and our families. Oh, so some of this would be a matter of pulling these things out, either writing them down, mm -hmm. making videos, uh, running workshops, whatever it might take, right? Yes, yeah, yes. It, a lot of different ways probably to surface these and, and get them back into circulation, as or uh, re-dynamize them, you might say, right? Yes. And then for me, um, I think my ultimate dream, um, and, and many of us in the community you know, share this dream, is that we would love to see um, practitioners working hand in hand with clinicians, um, where we're looking at um, the patient together and we're really coming up with the best um, the highest quality, um, the greatest impact for for the patient. No, no, that's that would be wonderful. I mean, that's that does truly put the patient at the center and, yes. and sort of says whatever is best for the patient. We'll we'll work around and we'll do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for some patients, yes, they're going to maybe want more of one, less of the other. Right. Uh, some are going to want to sort of borrow from from both camps, as it were, right? And, yes. Yeah, and, oh, that's excellent. That's that's wonderful. So. Um, if you were to uh, talk to students of any age, either young students or more advanced students, who are interested in pursuing this, what, what advice would you give them? What would you tell them about their sort of background, the studies, their, how should they prepare themselves to, mm. if they want to pursue this area? Um, well, I, I love my own pathway. I love that I started within my own family and I look to that source of knowledge right. um, to begin with. But I also have been really fortunate to work with um, incredible mentors and experts and leaders in the field. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they really trained and imparted their knowledge on me so that I can be a part of these successive generations that are rebuilding what um, we, we hope to reclaim. Mm -hmm. Right, so I feel like that's a part of it. Is find a good mentor, find a great teacher or a kumo, talk to your grandparents, talk to an auntie or an uncle. Um, just be open to learn and observe and to listen. Um, so much of it is listening, is and it's um, making sure that you're aware of details that are that are around you that you may not actually be attending to. Yeah, that, that's certainly critical for a lot of things is that, that learning to see what is out there, yes. to, to appreciate yes. the, the nuances. Uh, but you, you said something else that I thought was, was very intriguing. It, it's a need to uh, for your, this particular undertaking to understand that you're part of sort of a, a bootstrapping process, mm -hmm. right? There's mm -hmm. not there's not like a huge cadre of people out there already practicing this. You're you're no. you're working in a pretty narrow interface right now with a, yes. a pretty limited set of people, and you've got to have, I suspect, to succeed, you have to have a willingness to be 
sort of out there on that cutting edge. Mm -hmm. It's not for some a comfortable place, I'm sure. Yes, no, I mean, Hawaii in general, so we have a physician shortage, we have a clinician mm -hmm. shortage, we have an allied health professional mm -hmm. shortage. It's the same um, um, in other native and indigenous communities, too, and so, um, Every single one of us that goes into this field or into this discipline or into our organizations, we have a role in a, in a kuleana mm -hmm. to um, make sure that we continue to be that voice and that beacon so that more students and more learners can come in and that they feel welcomed and that they feel like um, they're valued mm -hmm. um, in that system too uh, when they learn. Yeah, and that's, that's I know, a, a huge area of interest and study and work right now, particularly at UH Manoa, is trying to be seen as a very inclusive environment and, mm -hmm. and to provide the, the support mm -hmm. that's needed to bring people, particularly people who are first generation college students, people yes. who don't have the role models, who don't really have the, any academic background in their family or whatever. Yes. Uh, and, and people are, have come to recognize students from those backgrounds need it's not enough just to throw them into the system and say, great, you've made it in DBH Manoa, go forth and do well. Yeah. They're not going to do it, right? A lot of them, you know, they need to have, they need to see some role models, they need to have people to talk to, they need to have a, a sort of broader base of emotional support where mm -hmm. people they can go to and say, I, I don't understand why I don't feel mm -hmm. right here. It seems like all my classmates are doing X and I'm off here wanting to do Y. And, yes. Yeah, yeah sometimes um, I'm in these groups and these discussions and I sit there in disbelief of, this, this is us, we are, um, we're Kanaka scientists. We are the, the Hawaiian you know, intellectuals that are trying to address these concepts um, that we've always known. Hawaiians have always been scientists. We've had advanced methods for observation, for deduction, for experimentation. Mm -hmm. um, and so the more that we can tell those stories and, and it brings the students in, you watch them shift and change when they can envision themselves as a scientist, mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's it's beautiful, and, and that privilege and that responsibility really comes out for all of us. Yeah, and so much that was, if not entirely lost, at least it was hidden for a long while, mm. uh, it, due to a whole variety of cultural factors yeah. and all. But and it's it's great now to see you're helping shine light on it, uh, rediscover it, uh, bring it forth, so that people can really benefit from that. that that's that's truly remarkable work. I, th I thank you so much for coming on here. This, oh, is, this has been a wonderful, uh, wonderful half hour. I'm only sorry it's so short. <laughs> uh, it seems like we ha could talk. We could keep going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dr. Kailoa Fox here uh, has been with me today. Uh, I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm only sorry we don't have more time to talk with her, but we'll be back next week for another episode of Likeable Science. Mm -hmm. See you then.